Hello everybody, you're watching the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode, we are going to show you how to program ECUs using Simulink hardware support. And for that video, I'm super glad to have Jose on board. Hi Jose, how are you doing? Hi Christoph, how are you? Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm really glad that you joined the meeting. Um, could you introduce yourself briefly, um, maybe also your automotive background, and then we can directly jump into the topic. Absolutely, Christoph. Uh, I'm basically a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. uh, specialized in controls, and I was actually part of a Formula SAE team as well while I was in college. Nice. And your role at the MathWorks? And I'm an application support engineer currently here at the MathWorks, yeah. and I was the one that created the demo that we're going to go over with right now. Exactly. We are going to introduce you to a race car demo. Um, it's a bit smaller scale, so it will be a model race car, um, but it's definitely worth to stay tuned for this video. Okay, Christoph, before we start, uh, it's good to note that this is the first video of a two-part series, um, yep. and what we're going to be talking about is um, a remote control race car right here. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we did is we have this car that we created, uh, we programmed the ECU for it, everything done using Simulink, mm -hmm. and we want to share it with you guys so that you guys get some ideas on how to program hardware with Simulink mm -hmm. and w where can you take it from there. Nice. Quick comment here, um, I don't want to interrupt you, um, we will put all models that we are going to present on file exchange. So you can start right from where we left in this video um, and reuse stuff as you wish. Absolutely. And for today's video, we're going to be covering uh, hardware support packages for Simulink. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give you a taste of what that looks like in the actual remote control race car that we have. How yep. do models look like? How are they set up? How do you upload it? Um, and then we're going to give you some options um, for using other hardware with Simulink. Nice. Well, I, I typically ask the question, why, why should teams do that? Um, why is it beneficial? So that brings us to the motivation. Um, the main reason is to save time. Um, mm. Ultimately, um, while you're designing your race car, you might run into something that's going to make you more competitive. It might be creating custom electronics. It might be testing your controllers. Mm. So what this is going to allow you to do is uh, you don't have to write actually code. You don't have to learn a new language. You don't have to be acquainted with a new ID to program a microcontroller. You can use what you already know in Simulink to just right. build it and upload it to hardware. Right. And this is exactly why we put some visuals here. So you certainly or you maybe will know some of the blocks, controller blocks, transfer functions. And we will teach you how to program ECUs with exactly these functionality. Exactly. And the idea is you might be familiar with this box, uh, PID, state space, programming this on mm -hmm. discrete systems by yourself is going to take a very steep learning curve, oh, yeah. while in Simulink oh, yeah. all you have to do is drag it from the libraries and then upload it to your hardware. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Before we jump into the demo, we're going to cover what model-based design is um, in order to explain where the deployment actually comes in. So mm -hmm. basically the idea is that you'll have one model that you're going to be reusing throughout the development cycle. This will allow you to not jump in between platforms while you're doing things like defining your requirements, creating simulations of your, of your hardware, and then finally deploying and verifying that hardware. Today, in particular, we're going to be spe specifically talking about how to deploy it. So how to right. take that code out of the simulation and put it into some sort of physical hardware. Right. And when, when math workers say deployment, they actually mean programming microcontrollers, programming ECUs. Exactly. So it generally means some sort of uh, code generation. Right. Exactly. Uh, why do we do this? Uh, there's three main reasons. Uh, reduced development time, mm -hmm. not having to learn a new language, new IDE, that reduces the time, and this is something that we're looking for in a competition. Reduces the cost because you can use the controllers that you've already simulated in Simulink that you know that are tried and true, and deploy those to a microcontroller. Yep. And then finally, it helps you couple those things together. So simulation and testing, uh, everything's going to be coming from the same model, so you know that it's exactly the same thing that you've already tried in simulation. Yep. And this is exactly, um, well, I 100% agree with Jose. Model-based design means that you're working with one model um, from the beginning of the requirements until the verification. When I talk to you guys, um, I see that you're brilliant in doing simulation and modeling, but sometimes you're losing some effectiveness when, you, when it actually is about programming the hardware and generating code. And I think this video, this episode is actually to help you on, on that end and to be super efficient and, as Jose pointed it out, to streamline um, your workflow between simulation and testing. What hardware do we support? We support everything from cameras to data acquisitions to microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. uh, today, in particular, we're going to be talking about things that might be more relatable to formula. Mm -hmm. 
things like Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, VeggoBones, and what we have running on our, our remote control race car, which is the Texas Instrument C2000 platform. Yeah. And by the way, the Texas Instrument C2000 family is pretty popular for automotive applications. I've seen um, teams using um, that for um, motor controls and in general automotive applications. So it's a pretty popular one among automotive um, teams. Absolutely. And the reason is it's loaded with features mm -hmm. and it's uh, relatively easy to program as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Here is a sample of what the libraries look like in Simulink. They're basically uh, block drivers. Mm -hmm. And the reason this is good is you can have your controller designed in Simulink and then test it on something like the Arduino. Uh, these are the blocks that are actually running on the hardware. This is what allows us to deploy it to the hardware. Yep. Let's say you try it on an Arduino and that doesn't have enough power for you. You decide to upgrade to a different piece of hardware, something like the TIC2000. Uh, your controller will remain the same. So it's the exactly. same controller you've already developed in Simulink. You don't have to write new code. You don't have to test new code. You just have to change your hardware drivers and then upload it to the new hardware. Right. And when Jose says hardware drivers, um, these blocks are basically representing your hardware. So um, they are digital and analog IOs. And well, we have observed that for some teams, they have, have done a proof of concept using an Arduino, which is super low cost. Mm -hmm. And then when you move into competition, um, you may think about more powerful opportunities your entire model-based design workflow can remain as is, and you only have to replace the, the, the blocks representing your hardware, which is super easy to do. Exactly. So we want to introduce you to this versatility. Nice. You are already doing all the simulation in Simulink. You right. might as well you know, take advantage of that to deploy. Yep. Uh, what are the benefits of this? Um, we mentioned it before, automatic code generation, no hand coding necessary. Right. We will generate the code. It will be specific to the IDE that you're running on. And then we do even upload it, and you can debug it in Simulink in most instances as well. Right. So especially, I think, a quick comment on that. Um, I, I, I observe the benefits here, um, especially for teams that are heavy on engineers. Um, it's, well, it certainly helps to have some um, C or C++ code coding capabilities, um, but it's not required. And that makes you so much more efficient um, when programming ECUs. Exactly. And then, uh, like we mentioned before, these are the type of things in Simulink that you're going to be able to use in your hardware, especially mm -hmm. the debugging capabilities. You're going to be able to run it on the hardware and take a look in real time at what's happening there. Today, what we have here is our remote control race car. As we mentioned before, this is a C2000-based project. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are actually using is the Launchpad XL from Texas Instruments. And what we have here is uh, uh, dual motors in the rear, so mm -hmm. independently driven rear wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, what we see in here, this large black device is uh, the Kvasser Blackbird, which is a wireless CAN device, which we'll be revisiting on the upcoming video about CAN. Yep. Um, then we have our actual ECU, which is our C2000 microcontroller. Um, up front, we're running a steering servo for the steering of the car. And then we have uh, an RF receiver for the commands coming from the driver. OK, Christoph, um, we're now in Simulink. Uh, and this is the model that we've actually uploaded to the Texas Instruments C2000 board. Mm -hmm. um, what we have here is um, it's organized in sensors, uh, CAN communication, our dynamics controllers, which is something that you will be most related to, and then finally the actuators, which is our motors. Yep. Um, what we have here is. Uh, blocks that I've developed uh, based on the libraries that we already have from C2000. For instance, this DC motors, all they are are PWM blocks, which we already have from our libraries. And then we do some calculations, some scaling, in order to get the correct, um, the correct results and signals into them. Yep. And this is something that you will be doing, uh, interfacing with your own motor drivers or with your own sensors. And something nice about Simulink is that it will allow you to do asynchronous programming. In this case, um, we're running uh, two encoders in the wheels of our car. Mm -hmm. uh, they're Hall effect sensors with magnets on them. So we have to basically count how many magnet crossings we have. Um, and to mm -hmm. do that, we have to do it asynchronously. In microcontroller, that means with a hardware interrupt. Mm -hmm. um, and Simulink allows you to do that basically with like function call subsystems, which is what we have over here. Yep. So every time that that magnet crosses that Hall effect sensor, we're going to be uh, triggering a count, and we're going to be counting up. Okay. 
Yeah, for you guys, you can imagine that as, well, a function is triggered by a certain event, which is not necessarily a time step. Is, is that about a right uh, explanation, Jose? Exactly. So it's yeah. something that's outside of the normal uh, sort of synchronous control loop that we're running. Perfect. I think we have to mention one thing. Um, could you go back to the slide introducing the car? Um, because we have some speed measurement system um, that we have not yet talked about. But I think it's, it's worth having a look there. Right, Christoph. So um, this is how our magnets are set up. So if you take mm -hmm. a look at the two top wheels, um, yep. that's the front left and the rear left, mm -hmm. you'll see these dots over here that correspond to the magnets. And we also have a whole effect sensor there. So here in the Simulink model, um, basically we're going to be getting uh, counters. So we're going to be counting using these hardware interrupts, and you can develop your own drivers. So you can interface with sensors that you have in your car. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we're interfacing with the counts that we're getting from these interrupts. And then we're performing some calculations to convert them from counts into the actual RPM of the yep. wheels. And once we have that, we feed all of that information into our dynamics controllers, uh, which in this case are relatively simple. Mm -hmm. They're really just there to give you a flavor of how easy it is to change these blocks around. Uh, yep. Basically, this dynamics controller section is what you would be developing in your simulations. And then all you have to do is couple it with whatever hardware blocks right. you need to develop for your car. Right. Nonetheless, even if, if controllers are very simple, um, let's have a look at them and, and take a high-level look at them to see what, what, what actually is happening behind the mask. Absolutely. So on the traction control side, we're going to be calculating the slip, mm -hmm. a slip in between the, the ground speed and the wheel speed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be the rear wheel, the driven wheel. Yep. And then we're applying a proportional gain to it. Uh, then we have some switches uh, to go front, forward and reverse. Right. Perfect. And then for the torque vectoring, all we're doing is we are proportionally adding a bias to the outer wheel of the car. So if we're turning left, we're going to be adding some more speed to the uh, rear right wheel of the car and the opposite for the other direction. Right. As you see, it's a very a minimalistic implementation of these controllers. We are not yet using any gyros or accelerometers. But I think this is where you come into play. Um, this is a framework that you can use. As said, we, put, uh, we will put things on file exchange. Um, feel free to, to take it from there and implement your magic there. Christophe, and in order to give you a flavor of what this mm -hmm. looks like in the actual car, um, here we're going to put a couple of videos uh, that we took of the car uh, with and without torque vectoring. That's going to give you an idea of how the uh, radius of rotation is going to be reduced by implementing some sim even some, some simple algorithm like this. Perfect. That's great. Um, that is also actually a proof that even though our algorithms are simple, they just work. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christoph, and that brings us to the fact that um, sometimes we are not going to have the hardware that you're looking to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe C2000 is not the right hardware for you, Arduino is not powerful enough. We do have other options for you to implement your control algorithms. Right. Uh, there's something like MATLAB and Simulink Coder, mm -hmm. and what this does is it will be able to generate C and C++ code mm -hmm. that's going to be reusable for you to put into whatever ID, whatever platform you're looking to program. Right. It perfectly makes sense. Um, that's simply the case for um, Methworks uh, will hardly be able to support any hardware on the market. So a very exactly. well, common workflow is to work with certain IDEs and make sure that the auto-generated code that comes from MATLAB or Simulink Coder is running into these IDEs, which is not Absolutely. covered in that video, um, but it's a very popular workflow as well. And we're going to be including some uh, descriptions uh, out of these products in the video as well. Nice. Nice. Very good. And then we also have some other options for real-time testing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be simulating real-time and simulating desktop real-time that are going to have a lot of very specific hardware support for real-time applications. Yeah. Just to share one example, and uh, certainly we cannot go into the details of these products, 
I suggest to have a look at a presentation that Green Team from University Stuttgart gave. They have been using a Speedgoat real-time, simulating real-time device um, as their main ECU. Um, I think it's very interesting mm. what they share about how they developed and tested their vehicle with that. Um, yeah, as said, we, we cannot go into the details, but we definitely want to make sure that, that you get all the infos um, to have a look. And then the key takeaway from this video is uh, get your designs out of simulator. That's the most important yeah, thing. Totally agree. Yep. Uh, you guys have been working already on very advanced simulations of your car. Um, you've been including controllers in there. Uh, what is the easiest low effort way in order to get those algorithms that you've already developed, simulated, and tried right. out of simulating? Yep. Try to find a support package that's going to suit your needs or to okay. generate some code and put it on your own hardware. Perfect. Um, if you want to be more competitive, you want to be creating your own custom electronics for your car, your own ECUs, this is an easy way to do it. Uh, yep. We know that you're going to yep. be worrying about the design and engineering, about other components in the car, uh, not having to specify or specialize in an actual programming language or an, or an IDE is going to help out a lot. Cool. Could you just give an example of custom electronics? What could that be? What could teams do? Uh, something that comes to mind, something like active aerodynamics, oh, yeah, yeah, drag yeah. reduction systems yeah. that will require you know, an additional module, a microcontroller, sure. to yeah. be running some sort of closed loop controller. Yeah. That might be something that you could be interested in. Good point. In. Good point. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it for now. Um, the next video that we're going to be talking about is going to be covering some CAN communication, and we're going to be using the same hardware again. Exactly. Thanks, Jose, very much. I'm already looking forward to the second video about CAN communication. Um, yes, this brings us to the end of this Racing Launch episode. Um, Jose and I, we are really looking for your feedback. Um, either send us an email or join our Facebook group and comment there. Um, if you want to get a full overview about the Racing Lounge, um, go to methworks.com slash Racing Lounge. There you will find all the videos that have been published to date. Um, you also have the opportunity to use Methworks software for your competition team. And if you do use our software, uh, we would be um, happy if you use the Methworks logo on your car or on your reports. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much, Jose, and see you soon.